So I want to talk to you about creating variables. I want to have a way to show you what the differences are between data types and the easiest way to do that right now is to have variables and then we can create variables that have a specific type we can see what happens do they get truncated do they two decimals four decimals so let's just get a uh, an idea of variables out of the way first right a variable is an n memory temporary or transient however you want to consider that temporary storage okay how about that a variable is in memory temporary storage okay. there are two types of variables scalar and table we are not going to talk about the table level table variables until chapter three. We will talk about the scalar variables now. A scalar variable is a variable that stores a scalar value. <laughs> no, circular logic works because circular logic works, right? Um, so <laughs> I'm assuming that you understand the basics of a, a scalar value, what that means. Uh, a scalar value means that it's one value per variable. Now there are special variables. Uh, there are special data types like the XML type, uh, which conceptually you could say, well, that's more than one value. Well, it's still a scalar value to SQL. Uh, so a scalar value is just a single value that's stored inside the variable. So we have to declare a variable. So we say declare, it's a required keyword. It doesn't have to be in capital letters, but you know my syntax and how I like it. And we define it with the at symbol. Okay, so that's also a required. So I could say Scott's variable. And then I have to define a data type. And I'm going to choose an integer, okay, shortcut int. Don't focus so much on the data types in this video. We'll get into that in the, like the next two, three, four, five videos here. Right now, just focus with me on what's a variable, what's the scope, what's a global variable versus a local variable. Like, stick with me on those concepts. Okay. Uh, you assign a variable. So I now set and notice, hey, look, the IntelliSense picks it up equals five. And then I can view the value of Scott's variable. Okay? Or I could make decisions on that. Okay? So I can execute it and so we're returning Scott's variable. Okay? I could have also selected Scott's variable. Okay? See how it populates in the variables list? Okay? And so it comes back and it doesn't have a column name so uh, as the value. Okay? There you go. Okay? So scalar value, single value, is stored within the variable. Now how about this? Is the variable still available? What if, for example, I copied this, made a new query window, and I pasted it in here? Will I be able to access that variable from a new session? You realize that's what's happened, right? We've created another session. We have this session, which is actually, uh, you could see down here, SPID number 51. Okay, so that's session ID 51. But when I look over here, you could see that I have session ID 54. These are two separate sessions. So that begs the question, is the variable available to other sessions? Right. Well, obviously, a quick execution uh, will tell us the answer and the answer is no let me ask a a related question is the variable re available to me from within the originating session so I'm back at SPID 51 where we originally declared the variable and remember that if I highlight the code it only runs that highlighted bit right so can I access the variable now no but for a different reason, okay? Now, what we have to understand, we have to understand scope, okay? Variables are scoped to the executing batch 
of the current session only. Okay? Now that means that another session cannot access my variables. Okay? I declared this variable in my session. I'm session 51. Session 54 cannot access mine. These are private variables. Okay, so these are known as private variables in other languages. We don't really call them private variables here in SQL. That's the only type of variable that we have is a private variable. We don't have the ability to do public variables. So variable, all variables are private here in SQL. But this part right here is very important too. Okay? Let's do this. Let's copy this code just to save a little bit of typing. And let's put a go command in here. Actually, I'll put, you notice that I'm getting the little squiggly, and it's because I don't have a batch terminator listed. Okay. It says, hey, you can't, de you've declared it already. I don't know what the exact, yeah, it's already been declared. See, once I put the word go, now it picks it up and it says, oh, okay. Well, we can declare the exact same name because after this word go, there is no longer a variable called Scott's variable. Now down here, I'll probably be able to explain it a little clearer here. We've declared the variable. We assign the variable equal to 5, and we say go. Now we want to print the value. But wait a minute, why are we getting this red squiggly? What is the scope of the variable? The executing batch. That means once you get to the batch terminator, the variable is gone. It's destroyed. Hey, like if you're familiar with the stack in, say, a programming language like C, C++, C Sharp, uh, any programming language, you've taken a plate, you've put it on the stack. Once the batch goes away, the plate taken off the stack. It's destroyed. Okay? You can't access it again. And so this generates a syntax error, both for this reason and for that reason. You're trying to access a variable that no longer exists. Go, the batch terminator destroys all variables declared in the batch. Another way of thinking about it is that variables cannot span batches. You cannot declare a variable in one batch and then access that variable again in another batch. Okay. Now, another way of how I think about it is variables cannot span network packets. Remember that a batch is just the instructions that get sent to SQL Server in a single network packet. You cannot declare your variable in one network packet, send that to SQL Server, and then in the next network packet, reference that previously declared variable. SQL Server has no way of keeping those network packets in a queue for you. It's not going to store one and say, okay, well, it might be three days until we get this next one from that person. It's not going to do that. That would be inefficient memory usage. So it simply says variables are scoped to the batch. Once you send me the batch terminator, no more vari all the variables are then removed from memory. Okay. Now let me just maybe further drive that home and then we'll finish up talking about assignment here. Um, come down here. We'll declare. Okay. And then let's look at it. Is this going to work? One of your cues is that the IntelliSense did not populate it, right? Whereas earlier it did because we were in the same batch. Now I want to run this. Different batch. One batch. Once you hit the Execute button, if there is no Go, it automatically makes a batch terminator. So when you come back down here and start running, it creates a brand new batch. You have to run all variables within this. So what have I done wrong here? Let's declare the variable Scott's variable. Um, now I've done something wrong here. If I Did I type it wrong? Oh, because I'm doing a table variable. Sorry. <laughs> Select all from. Um, 
that would be the syntax for the table variable. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later uh, in chapter three. Okay. So again, here, and then I cannot access it here. I have to do them all in the same batch.